that uh, I let them know that this is a safe space. The main goal of retrospect is for us to just come here and to talk about what went, you know, what went through um, throughout the sprint. Um, they should feel free. We are here to inspect and adapt. Nobody is here to judge nobody. So this is a place for them to talk. So after going through um, uh, icebreaker, getting them to relax, we do, uh, you know, a flashback of last retrospective, the action items that came up. Where, where are we? Were we able to meet those action items, you know, and so forth. And then after that, if those that we're not able to meet, we carry them forward into this retrospective and add it as an action item. And then we go through the format. So by then the team would have, you know, put up their thoughts on the board. So let's say, for example, when the start, stop, continue, right? So I asked the team, oh, so reflecting back at last sprint, even prior sprint, right? What are some of the things you think we should start doing? You know, reflecting back at our processes, our tools, um, our interactions with people, even if myself, the Scrum Master, I did something that you didn't like, you know, or there's something that you want me to start doing. Um, let's talk about it. Then I go through the issues on the board. We talk about it. We elaborate more, you know, make it more fun. I don't go there looking all bossy. I let them know we are all part of the team. I also put out my, my thoughts in there. Um, if the action items that come out of this, the start column, I identify them. We go to stop, we do the same activity over and over again, continue the same thing. And then we look at the action items. I let them know, you know, the main goal of retrospective items, retrospective is for us to get action items, you know, because we are what? Inspecting, adapting, and getting better, right? So we need to find out of this activity, we need to be able to get action items that will get us better, right? Good. So um, when we identify the action items, I'd be like, okay, we have about five action items. Let's be real. Um, let's see if we could select about two, three, or if we think we can even um, hit, hit or uh, hit on this action items, this next sprint, that is good. But one, we need people to, you know, own this retrospective. Um, even this for the team, we need uh, uh, volunteers to, you know, uh, pick one and be like those period on and then you know um, make the team be able to you know uh, work towards these action items and then boom we get volunteers myself I also pick action items to work on so throughout the sprints when the sprint start the new sprint start um, this uh, action item sometimes we might put it on our board you know just to be transparent and make everybody remember that these are action items we need to follow through um, also, I have other meetings with uh, stakeholders that I'm there. So if there an action item that the stakeholder has to follow up, I'm paired on, on, on with that st a stakeholder. This is something that the team needs. The team is lacking. We need to work on. So, yep, summarize all that's how I run my retrospectives. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. We have similar styles. Um, awesome. Um, who else wants to take another shot? Anyone? Thank you very much, Felix. That was a very detailed um, description on how you run your retrospectives. Um, who wants to go next? All right, go ahead, Anya. I can go next. Um, so for me right now, um, my team is primarily based out of India. So I have a distributed team. The majority of my team's in India and the one developer that I have um, that is stateside. A lot of what Felix has described um, is the standard typical way of running your retrospective. Um, I like what he says and what you do as well, Cynthia, bringing that fun aspect into it, um, doing those icebreakers and, and getting them comfortable and, and um, start to get their thinking juices going. <clears throat> I will say that for me, however, I have limited time with my squad. So we have uh, two week sprints and I only have sometimes 45 minutes, 30 minutes to do retrospective. So it's, I don't have the luxury of doing icebreakers or sharing certain aspects. I just what I do because of the time constraint, we go immediately into um, 
congratulatory first. So what, what, how do you want to recognize, like recognizing each other? Because I think that is the most important. What do you think that, that I did the sprint that was successful that you want to recognize um, your colleagues for? And that to me always set the tone for the retrospective on a positive way rather than, because sometimes we have sprints and, and where they don't meet their commitments or there's just a lot of excuses. And, and it's, I know it's going to be a, a, like a conversation where there's going to be strains. So um, I always make sure that they are congratulating each other, uplifting each other before we go into, okay, let's really get into the nitty gritty of this, um, what we want to, to work on. <clears throat> so I use the mirror board all the time. There's a lot of great templates um, that we can use. So um, what I don't do is I don't do what worked, what didn't work. I use other sentences or other images. Um, one that I like to use I, is, is camping. So what do you need for camping? You need fire or what could prevent your camping um, from being successful? weather, animals, nature, whatever. So I use um, other, other type of images to really get them to think. And I use a lot of analogies in our conversations. Um, another aspect that it's to make it personable. So the Olympics just happened. Everyone can relate to the Olympics. Do you have a favorite sport? Um, let's talk about it. How can you compare like the what the how you see the Olympic um, and an Olympian and, and how they practice and how they prepare? How can we emulate some of that to work as a team like the US men um, team had a really challenging time. So I use that as an example, like, how come they didn't succeed? How come they didn't earn a medal? Does it really have to be with the, was it the team dynamic or was it the coaching? So always looking for how we can, I can uplift the conversation, but I would say one of the reasons that I do that is my team is really quiet. That is the biggest challenge that I have. A team that just will not speak unless you call on them each individually. So when that happens, what I have done because I use mural, I don't want to call them out and say, "Hey, Cynthia, you know, share this with us." I I want them to to volunteer to speak. But what I end up doing because they're so challenging, I create, I assign colors. Like if you use in the mirror board, it's the stickies, they have different colors. So each person now have a color. So I ensure that each person has something to share and they can speak to what they're sharing. Um, to me, that's what I found is the most successful way for them to speak. And that is the challenging, that is how I'm overcoming these challenges. So just thought I'd share that. Um, because I, I hear a lot of people saying, my developers aren't speaking, this is not happening. So that's the battle that I have and that's how I handle it. Thank you so much, Anya, for sharing. Um, I used to have that issue because um, when I joined my organization, I, had, I was managing two teams. So I ended up taking up a third one because my manager felt um, I was the best person to pick up. Um, an additional team. I was faced with a challenge of having people not speak up and um, it was very bothersome. Um, someone tried to write it off to say it was a cultural thing. I said, oh, well, um, let's see what we can do to break the, the, the ice. Um, they have to understand when you get your money, you get US dollars. It doesn't have no cultural peg to it. So if we need to do this, we need to do this, right? So I took it upon myself to go around um, I conducted one-on-ones to find out what the challenge was with them speaking up. And at the, at the tail end of those, or let me say my conclusion was that, top of my conclusion was the fact that the teams didn't really get to know each other very well because the organization in itself was a revolving door. So we had people coming and going, coming and going, and there was little time for people to get to know each other and then they would up and leave, you know? And so they said, well, we work remotely. We have no idea. Certain people would not go look through the documentation to know 
uh, people's capacities. They just meet every day, report and go. So most people within the team didn't even know who was front end, back end, full stack. They just knew me as a scrum master, the PO, the lead dev, and then every other person was uh, maybe maybe the QA. Um, so what I did was I said, hmm, how do I get these people to interact more, uh, share more, get to talk more? And so I introduced something called a Fun Friday, where we breeze through the, um, the stand up and we leave enough time to share jokes. So what I do is I come in with a joke. If you ask them, they'll tell you my Oscar master's crazy because I always come in with something new. You know, I got to know these people beyond the work. You know, as they shared their space and their time, I got to know who was a dog lover. I got to know who was a bathroom singer. I got to know, you know, getting, getting to know these people and teasing them about it makes them laugh, relax, you know, and then feel more inclined to share. And then over time, I found out that we had the first and second and third, and they said, hey, how about we add this to our team charter so we can have it every Friday? And that was how, boom, I introduced the Fun Friday. And then the outcome of having the Fun Friday was that one, they were always looking forward to it. Two, they felt comfortable teasing each other about each other's either lifestyle, um, beliefs, not religious, not, not religious, just beliefs, conversation, where we have conversations and, and stuff like that. And in no time, we were able to achieve different things, one of which was breaking down silos, you know, people wanting to share, offering to conduct Katie within the team, uh, pair programming, people were not like, oh, I have to work with this person, you know, things like that. Um, during my retros, one thing I want, I like to do is to always reiterate the fact that we are here to attack the issues, not the person. Mm. And so I'm always saying we either win together or we lose together. Right. So I've repeatedly countless times to the point where once I say we either they complete it and then we all have a laugh and then we go. You see what I mean? Um, because we have, no matter how good you are as a scrum master, or no matter how um, cooperative some people are, we always have those outliers, those ones who we always have them, right? So what what the battle is for you to ensure that they kind of fall in line or not become clogs in a wheel. So I am constantly reiterating the fact that we are here to attack the issue. So let's talk specifically about the issues that arose that made us unable to meet our spring goals, not pointing fingers, because I want to make sure that I keep the psychological safety up, right? right. So when I see someone trying to go towards that path, I have a way of staring them back to the issue at hand. So I say, if we do not meet the spring goal, we do not meet the spring goal. Not because this person did not pick up this or that person did not do that. So I'm constantly reiterating that. Yeah, that, that is a very great point. And I think um, it's something that we as a scrum master, well, I don't use the word scrum master anymore, scrum disciples or scrum Ooh, leaders. That's a new one. Uh, <laughs> that we really uh, be cognizant of and be mindful of, like make, ensuring that there is no finger pointing and that we are focusing on what was the sprint goal and, and why didn't we complete our sprint? And even if I know that Cynthia did not meet her commitment, whatever the reason was, it's a conversation that we need to have. How could I have helped her meet her commitment? So that is that is the heart of it during our retrospective. Um, but I will say with your Fun Fridays, I also do Fun Fridays and we share music. Um, we share music and like going into the weekend celebrating or, yeah. um, and I also do motivational Mondays. Like come with a quote where we motivate each other for the week. Like this is the, 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 the quote we are going to adapt for the week. And at the end on Fridays, like, okay, how, how did the quote inspire you? Um, did it help you overcome a challenge? So it's, I, I also do motivational Mondays, which I think is very helpful. Bam, I'm time. tapping into that one. Motivational yeah. Mondays, there you go. <laughs> so who else wants to share with us, guys? Who wants to share with us? I see Rashida, you have the floor. Looks like Humphrey had his hand has his hands up. Yeah, well, you guys pretty much um, um, pretty much full circle. I, I don't I have nothing to really to add, uh, but I just have a question. I had a question in regards to um, this might you know help others as well on the call, um, where 
the um, you do have that one developer, one person on the team that's not being responsive to the retrospective. Like you've gone over this maybe once, twice, and or they revert back to old habits. Um, how how do we get them out of that rut? What what is the um, what are your approaches? That's an open question. Who wants to pick that up? And guys, as Scrum Masters, I really wanna encourage us to share here because if we do not share when we are here, um, I call this our mini Scrum of Scrums, um, how then can we even encourage people to talk when we are in the meetings, right? So let's not make it a Cynthia, Felix and Anya's thing. We would like to hear and learn. Um, for instance, I have learned from her that I can also go with the motivation on Mondays. So let's just share and broaden our knowledge versus leave it to one, two, three people to have conversations. We all do retrospectives here if we are practicing Scrum Masters. And let's not just leave it to people who are practicing. Um, those who are yet to get jobs, this is the forum where you sharpen your knowledge. I will tell you one thing. After I had my Scrum um, training, what I had was the basic training, was it, what was expected of Scrum gave me, even as a, even as a non-practicing um, Scrum Master, I was listening to people as they were speaking and I was imbibing the knowledge they were sharing, talking about real life scenarios, I was embodying them. And so even when I went into my interviews, I was going with agile minds at the back of my mind. So I can tell you there's a lot you have to benefit from this platform, but you have to avail yourself to using the platform. One of which is being very vocal. For those of us who do not have practical experience, trust me, just avail yourself, give it a go. There is no right or wrong way to do it here. So having said that, who wants to go next? Can, can, can you please ask a question again? How, go ahead, can you repeat the question? Uh, sure, I was just asking, um, like um, how do we do with personnel that are um, somewhat uh, unresponsive to, um, to retrospective, you know, without getting them to their manager, you know, because we didn't, that would be you know, like your last resort. But you really want this person to be on your team. You already got the, the relationship with the rest of the team members going, but you just not, you know, getting, you know, the kind of results you will want uh, from the retrospective in the performance of your team member. How, how what other approaches do you go about? improving your yeah let me yeah i got it now let me just give it a shot um let, let me uh, take this scenario from um looking at our family you know you take it home first okay and you're in a family meeting and then you have one of the members of the family that doesn't want to participate doesn't want to speak you know as one of the family members also or as as the head of the family uh what are you going to do you know, how are you going to make the person speak? You know, so, um, yeah, uh, first, I, I'm not going to embarrass the person by asking him directly, you know, in the meeting that, hey, uh, why are you not speaking or whatever? Since I've noticed that, all I just need to do is to have a one on one with the person, you know, have a personal uh, uh, conversation with the person. Um, first, you have to make him have confidence in you that you're not coming to him or her um, to despise um, his own part of um, attitude that, hey, uh, yeah, I, I may decide to speak, I may not decide to speak, but you, you're going to um, uh, make him have some kind of a psychological uh, uh, um, safety uh, that, um, yeah, whatever you contribute, it doesn't... Um, you know, had a negative effect on you. And um, yeah, uh, we always respect everybody. Okay, we I, respect I like your views. I, yeah. I, I like that answer. I was thinking more of performance. Let's, let's say the, the on, on one retrospective, for, for the, after one sprint, we, we've already gone through our motions, right? We've already gone through um, 
the action items that we were going to implement, um, you know, that we came up for one retrospective, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, the team members go about, we go into the next sprint, they accomplish what they need to accomplish, even some action items. But you have this one person that is but probably have hardly got into the action and we're not really sold on the process. So we're, we're back in the retrospective and we end up repeating maybe what we, we talked about before. And of course, I, like we, we already mentioned here, how it's, it's, the, it's one for all, all for one team aspect to make sure that, you know, we all come in as a team, but the, there's always a common cause where we have always not met our goal and it's this team member that is not being responsive to our retrospective how do we deal with that yeah um, let me let me point this out you know uh, uh, based on one of the comments um, one of us um, made here that uh, in the retro it's not a, a place to point fingers okay but retro i think it's for our development. It's, it's for us to inspect our processes and uh, tools and adapt ourselves and see areas of improvement and all that. You know, so I, I don't think there is any other thing you I, I can do than to have a personal relationship with the person. <laughs> you know, with having personal relationship with the person, you can know what the, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'm not a practicing scrum master, but definitely uh, I, I will be soon, uh, okay? So what I'm going to do, you know, in my layman way is just to have a personal relationship with the person. Just um, try and, um, yeah, no empathy is, is even very important. Who knows what is passing through, okay? So I, I want to be his friend, you know, I want to know what his heartbeat is. I, I just want to get close to him, you know. I want to uh, be there maybe five minutes before um, the retro start. I want to throw him some emojis. I want to make him laugh. I want to make him smile, you know. I just want to tease him up, you know. I want to open him up. You know, I think um, if um, you are enlightened or if um, it's like, hey, this guy, I'm always being him to myself, but he keeps um, throwing stuff to me. But what are the stuff he's throwing to me? Uh, is it positive stuff? Is it negative? You know, so uh, to every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. Whatever action I put across, you know, I'm going to have an, a reaction, you know, based on that. You know, so I, I know nobody is uh, maybe as stolid as that, that, oh, it, it could be a rock. You just don't want to be broken up. You know, it's very difficult, you know, for people uh, to adapt to change, you know. Yeah. But, you know, little by little, I, I know you, you're going to get there. That's my own uh, uh, suggestion. Okay, thank you for the contribution, Eli, Tom. I am also under the impression that this particular person is someone who probably doesn't want to come for the retro. Humphrey, can you clarify that? Not necessarily. Um, the, the, the participation is there. Um, and there is perhaps maybe some indication, the willingness to change uh, or improve in this case. Um, but, you know, it's just, we're results uh, oriented, right? Mm -hmm. uh, working software is the primary measure of progress, according, you know, to the Agile Manifesto. So you, you got this, um, you know, so whenever there is need for improvement in performance, um, basically okay, well, we, in time Sorry to cut you short. We, we have Olawale, Olawale's hand. Okay, okay, I just want to uh, uh, Yeah. So <laughs> Olawale, do you want to go? Yes, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I just want to take a quick talk about this. Um, and I think we've mentioned this in the group times without number. We've treated this, we've treated this question times, times without number. And uh, root cause analysis, you can never go wrong in analysis when you have a situation where by trying to find out the why. So every action, there's a motive. For every action, more. So, Olawale, um, we are not, um, your audio is is bad. Do you want to go back out and come can back you, in? Can you, can you hear me? 
yes, we can. All right. So I feel as a human, there must always be that communicating channel, mm -hmm. that that um, option to tap into to using get getting to find out why certain things are happening certain ways, part of which the initial speaker mentioned. So, and I believe as Scrum Master, one of our responsibilities is to have that, always have that stilt way, that stilt strategy, that tactics. You are just more like a diplomat, like that tactics of you um, getting, having a one on one first, just like the uh, initial speaker said. I would want to know his why, his or our why. And um, what can we do or what can I do? What can we do as a team or what can I do to help this person? You just have to meet them where they are. Try to see what 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 the what is even stopping them from, you know, being part of a team like they should. You know, you want to address those concerns, whatever you gather as an insight, or address them. You want to make them come up with a solution a recommended solution to before you start addressing you know it could be anything it could be that person feel intimidated you know maybe the whole uh he doesn't have that sense of belonging as a team member it could be anything so based on what you gather would determine how you could you know go ahead and address that situation and always and then one thing i um, also do is I always cultivate that habit of continuous com communication with each and every one of the team members. Just the way you're observing them during your sprint, you want to observe, you want to see why, what, who are my team members? Who are those ones talking? Who are those ones not talking? Try to understand their choice of words tells more, tells more about what their intent is sometimes than what they actually intend to you know put out there you act you act for clarification of certain things if they're in case of them using a bigger word you know this will make you understand what how they really feel especially in the days of we working remotely you know this will make you really understand your team your team very well well much better and see how you could help from time to time thank you Thank you so much, Olawale, for that very insightful contribution. Thank you so much. Um, who wants to take another shot? You can never go wrong, like you said, with the root cause analysis. The first thing we want to do is find out why from the person. And in doing that, we're asking open-ended questions. We're not giving them the opportunity to give us a yes or a no. Uh, okay. Sorry, can I ask an unfree question? Go ahead. Uh, um, if you were the person that was not speaking during the um, retro, how would you want to be approached? That's a good one. Um, like you said, uh, 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 it would be personally, um, there, there should be a reason. And um, basically it will be up to the, the scrum master to um, first recognize it and um, then approach it. And this will, be, this will probably be like a spinoff meeting, like to find out what is wrong, um, if it, it need be get personal and um, try to draw out what that, um, that person's experience is. No, Humphrey, no, Humphrey, he's asking you. He's, the no, I'm, question I'm is directed at you. Yeah, How so would if you I was like the person, to that would be my expectation because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm naturally an introvert. You know, so if some for some reason I'm unresponsive, right? Unresponsive and in a group setting. And um, perhaps there is not any clarity as, as far as what the objectives are for the team because I'm not being, you know, I'm not engaging. Um, uh, I, will, I will need that personal response, well, similar to what you said, all that time. Oh, light on, does that? Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, yeah. Thank you. It, it really, it really answers it, and it answers the question too. You know, Humphrey. Let, let me, okay. let me uh, make everybody laugh. I have three kids. Okay, I have two boys and a girl. Okay, and um, I'm telling you, I know all their behaviors. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we have um, what we do together most of the time, but when we come together with their mom and all that, you know, one person may decide not to speak. 
uh-uh, come on. What am I going to do as a parent? If you ask him a question, you know, before everybody, he's not going to say nothing. I'm telling you, he's not going to say anything. Okay, let that, that, that time just pass. As soon as it passes, boom, you see him very active doing something else. You know, but when I go to him one-on-one, -on -one, I say, hey, come on, you know, you look like me, okay? You know, I like you, and you know, I even love you. You know, I love all of you, but you were not speaking when we were asking you questions. You want to tell me why? No, no, daddy, I don't want to say nothing. I said, no. Okay, I put him in the car, I drive him out. You know, before you know it, it's, it's changed, okay? Uh, I, I, I. I just, I was mad because my sister did this to me. I said this to me. And then the way you, talk, you spoke to me also, you know, you said I did this and I didn't do that. Or uh, I was shy to talk or whatever. It's just going to give me some reasons. You know, so you see, relationship matters. Okay. Uh, and that's why before you can win a woman to your side, how, how do you do, how do you present yourself? She doesn't want to speak. She doesn't want to say anything. You know, and I'm telling you, the most defensive weapon of a woman is her face, her look. She may... <laughs> you have to go there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, actually, that's, actually a good, that's actually a good point. That's actually, that, that's actually a good point, you know? Thank yeah, you. I, I agree with that. I agree uh, with that. Uh, okay, so for you to break that um, defensive weapon that she has, there is nothing that you cannot do to win anybody to your side. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Olaiton, for being very insightful. Um, can we have more contributions from other people? Can we hear from someone who hasn't spoken at all today? This is the point where we get to unmute our mics. Hey, so this is Pasmarti again. Okay. Hey, so so basically, uh, I have so far. I I mean, I don't really have a pretty experience working as a scrum master. I have around four months of uh, uh, experience working as a scrum master. So basically, I, I mean, so far I have not conducted uh, the retrospective retrospective. So I I am planning on conducting our retrospective from the next sprint, which we are actually going to start from the next Monday. So, so I just wanted to know as a beginner, so what and all the areas that I'm, uh, that I'm supposed to concentrate and what, how I'm, how am I supposed to initiate this retrospective meeting? So Pasimati, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you get all your ceremonies on the calendar because um, we all have reporting lines, right? Or supervisors or managers or whatever they are. Um, organizational wise. You want a situation where when you're having a one-on-one -on -one with your manager, when you get hired, everybody has certain expectations of you. It could be a 90-day expectation. It could be a six-month expectation. You want to be able to say to them, when I joined the team, this was not in place. I put this in place, right? right. So when I joined uh, my organization, they didn't have retrospectives going on. They didn't have um, regular ceremonies, I put those on a calendar, made it a reoccurring thing, and I had to coach them on the necessity. It's like fish without water. We cannot survive right. without it. You know what I mean? Right. So right. this, see this as your opportunity to shine. The fact that you do not actually have a retrospective going on right now in your organization and you being the one to introduce it, that's a win for you. Yeah, and also, and also, I, I just wanted to share a couple of things. The can, three, can, three. can I say okay. something, please? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Please. Okay. Uh, uh, um, it, it's a very nice question. Uh, first, um, I, I, I'm just going into Scrum to, to be a practicing Scrum master, you know, uh, and I'm going to start very soon. Okay. The grace of God. You know, so, uh, but uh, with all the experiences I've gathered, you know, on this platform and, um, with um, every other person. I know first you have to, whatever you want to do, you have to go prepared. Right. Okay, Absolutely. there is a purpose for everything. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, if you caption it, yes, retro. What is the purpose of the retro? What, who and who should be in the retro? Okay, know um, who should be in the retro, who shouldn't be in the retro. Mm -hmm. Okay, so know your team. 
okay, know the timing, be ready. So when you can take care of that first, the biggest hurdle has been jumped over, okay? So the, the other thing is, what, why do we have retros? Retros is to improve ourselves, is to um, um, check ourselves on our processes and our tools. Uh, first, we have been trying to um, produce, uh, develop a product, okay? Uh, and now, this is not about product. It's about ourselves, you know? Uh, this is when you put in your empathy. This is when you don't point fingers. This is where you want to show there is some kind of psychological safety. This is where you want everybody to participate. This is where you look at people. This is where you don't want to point fingers. And um, yeah, uh, there should be a purpose of that uh, uh, retro. So you write down your purpose. And at the end of the retro, what do I want to achieve? Okay, so if you have that guideline by your side, no matter how uh, uh, um, nervous you may be, the, 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 your readiness will always put you on the right path. You know, so put your stuff together and know um, what you want to discuss about. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah, and, and, also, and while and you're doing that, please keep in mind that the, the main purpose of the retro is to have the team confide in each other about what went wrong, okay? What did they do right? What did they do wrong? And right. how can they, yes, want to discuss the challenges, want to celebrate the wins. Yeah, so yeah, the but, retro is not a, about you as a scrum master, it's more about the team. Yeah, right. I, I'm yes. sorry, in, in saying that, you, you don't want to say, mostly I don't want to say what went wrong. I know it makes it, I can say that, but I don't want to say, but how can we be better? How yeah, there are different ways to phrase it. Yeah, there right. are different ways to phrase yeah. it. By yeah. the end of the day, at the bottom of, of it all is what went wrong and how do we deal with it to ensure that going forward, we do not have those challenges. Or when we are faced with those challenges, then we can have a faster turnaround to either fixing the issue. Right. And I do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. So uh, can I go ahead and uh, put it out? As long as it has to do with retrospectives, because that's what we're focusing on today. It's to, to any box um, a question. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, so, and also, I mean, previously, before I joined as a Scrum Master, they don't really have a daily stand up or a retrospective or a demo or anything. So, as soon as I joined as a Scrum Master, so I scheduled all these meetings. But the main thing is they are not attending the meetings and then they are, they, are, they are trying to say that they are working on different projects or they are working on the production issues or they are dealing with some other projects. So I, I, have, I have scheduled one-on-one -on -one session as well, but even for that as well, they are not able to attend. They are just saying that they are working on different issues and their calendar is busy all the time, eight hours a day. So I, I see... So I don't really know how to uh, how to overcome this issue. So, so do you guys? Uh, can anybody assist me with that? I see Olawale. Olawale's hands are up. So, you want to go? Yes, ma'am. Oh, so, quick one. Um, pretty much sounds like um, you working with a new team, right? A new um, the new environment. Right. Um, you want to know what the practices was before you started with this team to begin right. with. Do you want to know what they right. were, what the approach was? Right. How are they developing their value? How are they um, <coughs> uh, producing their value? What is the culture? What is the working culture? You know, so you just don't want to get in there and dump, you know, um, these crumb ceremonies, the agile rituals, and everything on their lap and without them necessarily knowing the value, the, the meaning, what the benefits and what are the, you know, um, disadvantages attached to each one if they fail to, you know, do it. So you want to, that's part of what we're talking about, right? You meet them where they are, try to understand, gauge their knowledge of, you know, uh, scrum processes, you know, try to know what they have going on before you join. And, um, they asked you the question of, because whatever you got gather from that prospect, I mean, from that area, from that angle is what would give you um, a formidable insight as to how to help the team, you know, um, 
uh, uh, approach their ceremonies, try to understand what the uh, daily stand-up is all about, you know, the refinements, you know, and the review, the retro, you know, that's that's when you know how to come up with a with a workshop or like some kind of like a like a uh, like a coaching sections for for the team. And you uh, the, also the mentioned old slide where you say you get. I know Goma. Sir, please could you mute yourself? You also mentioned something about your teams coming up with complaints about distractions and all of that. I mean, I feel like that's something you should be able to have a meeting with your uh, product owner. We do. If you have a product owner, if you have anybody serving in that capacity, to take a look at and see how you guys could address it, because it's your responsibility as a scrum master to ensure your team is not distracted. They'll be able to, in order for them to be able to focus on, you know, the job that needs to be done from sprint to sprint, and. Um, you need to have that meeting with your PO and um, just get to have an idea of why they getting distracted, why they're having so many things. Because right. that's that's right. one thing you've got at from right. what your team told you, because you need them to be able to focus right. on right. sprint goal. You need them to be able to um, uh, deliver our, uh, from, from sprint to sprint. So um, those are the few things I just have to you know share with you that you may want to look into. Thank you. Thank you, Olawale. Uh, great insight right there. Um, Pastor Maddie, the first thing you want to do when you join a team is not to start changing or swapping out their meetings. While you're being onboarded, the first thing you want to do, whether as a practicing or as an experienced scrum master, is to first end the trust of the team. If they don't trust you, they will not respect you. If they do not respect you, they will frustrate you. And if you work in an organization like mine, the team can take you out as a scrum master. So the first thing you want to do as you're getting onboarded is to try to get to know them. You start your, I, I start my one-on-ones from the very first day and you do not have to put a time on someone's calendar to have your one-on-ones. There's something I keep saying. Some people, these dev guys, let's not forget, they are nerds. The only language they understand is coding. They don't have time for the small talk. So sometimes it's a chat. A chat just does it. Hey, how are you doing? Just checking upon you know, checking up on you. You have any challenges? Hey, I'm just trying to get to know you here. Um, about this team, what's your perception about the team or the sport, whatever your nomenclature, your organization call it. So sometimes it's just a chat, you know, but if you go and put a time from one to one thirty, they'll be like, Who, who's this heifer that thinks he can yeah, come in? So you have to, you just have to find a way. There's always a crack. If you find the crack and then break down the wall one piece at a time, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. the first thing you want to do is end your trust. I saw um, somebody's hand up. Anya, go. Hey, um, I, I have to drop soon, but I, I actually just have a, a quick question for uh, Pasamathi is, it sounds like either they don't understand what it's like to work in an agile environment or has the, the organization shared that they are going through an agile transformation. Is it something that's being adapted across the board? Um, or are you a scrum master who was hired as a project manager or some kind of other role, but you want to implement your scrum learnings? Because the fact that you're getting so much pushback, it does give me pause in terms, do they actually know what your job is, what your role is, mm -hmm. and do you have the necessary support? Because to me, that seems to be the missing link and you need to get that, you need to get the support. And if you're not working in an agile environment where the organization has decided to adapt agile and you want to introduce it, you, you do have to step back. And um, like similar to what uh, Cynthia has suggested and Alawale, figure out how you want to introduce it. You can just abruptly put something on their calendar and abruptly expect them to, to start working the way that you want. So it seems like you have to do some preparation on how to share your learnings with them and share these the practices of being working in a scrum framework. So Absolutely. that that, that, is, that would be my advice right there. Because I don't know, it seems like there's a disconnect between what you're doing and what the team's understanding. Right. right. 
Right. So we hope so you can come back and share your action item as well as the outcome in the chat. You know, the WhatsApp or the Telegram, Telegram chat. We would like to hear how you progressed with this particular challenge, Pasimati. I, I will say thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, everyone, for allowing thank me you, to, Anya. to share it with you. Nice Take care. You on here. Thank you. Um, I see Humphrey's hand. Humphrey, you want to take a shot at this? Right. Uh, just, just to add uh, to what everybody else has said, <clears throat> the uh, it's, it, my first um, you know thought that came to my mind was uh, this uh, from a related experience was that these these sounds like developers that are not just on your team but in other teams. And uh, that will also be the cause of them going about. And like it was suggested before, uh, you don't want, as, as a new Scrum Master, what it sounded like, you don't want to just come in and blah, blah, blah. Uh, however, what I would do, because normally, you know, the one thing that they should be acquainted with is the da daily stand-up, because you, you mentioned in your story that the uh, retrospective, they didn't really do that. And you, you'll be amazed how many teams out there that don't really do that. But what you could do as a scrum master, because you're engaging and getting to know your team, you have to suggest these things. Suggest because they have to buy in, just as was mentioned before. They, they need to get your respect. They need to get a sense of professionalism as far as what you, you, you're there for them. You know, you're trying to make their lives easier and you will come back. Well, you know, one way we can go about this, hey, we could discuss this in a retrospective that is yet to be scheduled, but would this be something that you guys would be interested in so that we can look at this as an, in a team level and make sure we make the necessary progress towards our next sprint. So that, that would be a way you can go about it. Um, so I just thought I could add that to the. Thank you, Humphrey. Um, Olua Tosin, I did see your hand off, even though you took it down. Do you want to take a shot at this? It's either you want to answer his question or we want to go back to what we were uh, talking about, which is how do we conduct our retros? I would really, really love to hear from people who have not said anything. Um, we have people, I wouldn't want to start calling people's names, but it would be nice to hear your thoughts. Um, perhaps we have one or two things to learn from you as well. How do you conduct your retrospective? Oluwato saying, you want to go? You are mute. Uh, are you referring to me? Yes. Oh, I didn't. I didn't raise my hand, but uh, it's fine. So, um, as far as um, uh, retro's uh, perspective is concerned, um, so one thing we need to also understand is that. Uh, um, the Scrum Guide doesn't state in particular uh, the style in which we can uh, conduct our re retrospective. So if, if you have, uh, uh, and also retrospective uh, style varies from uh, team to team. So if you have um, some team members that are not speaking up in the retro, even, even if uh, the camera is off, we, we, you're still going to find some people who are not uh, willing to speak. So and that thing you can do is uh, use, uh, utilize the group chats to do that. Some people find it comfortable uh, typing their um, opinions or suggestions or, or, or improvements. Some people find it uh, comfortable doing that than uh, speaking. So if you have um, some team members that are not uh, willing to speak, you can uh, you can you can do you can do that through. Um, you can conduct the retrospective through um, group chats and ask them uh, what are their uh, suggestions and uh, how do they think um, uh, the team can improve based on um, their experience in the last uh, sprint. And I've done that, it works. And I'm, I'm not saying my style is going to work for you, but I'm just saying you can give it a try. And if you do that, you start seeing um, people who, who hasn't spoken uh, before. You start seeing, seeing them um, uh, bringing up uh, suggestions and, um, uh, and sharing their ideas. And so that way, you can, uh, you can know what else or what action you are going to take next. And that's it from me. 
Thank you, Lord. And that was very insightful because you, you started first by telling us how we should do it. So I was going to turn the ball in your court and say, how do you do it? But then you said, that's how I do it. So I said, okay, there we go. All right. Thank you so much, Alua Tosni. Does anyone have um, further um, ways in which they conduct their retrospective? Let's keep in mind that the, the question is, how do we run a retrospective? Or if we're not currently running retrospectives, how do we intend to? I see Sheriff. Sheriff, go. All right, thank you. Um, I'm not a pra practicing scrum ma master, but you know, hopefully I'm able to um, start soon. So um, even though I, I've never done it, but I just want to try it out, you know, in case I, this is one of the questions that do come up in my interview. So um, as, a, as a Scrum Master, one of the ways um, I do my retrospective is by using the um, four L's technique, um, you know, um, what do we like, um, what do we, um, wait, sorry. What do we like? What do we? What have we learned? Um, what do we long for? And what do we want to do without? So, what do we like is something we're already doing. And you know, I pose the question to them um, for the um, for the developers or people that are not very vocal. Um, you know, I use a sticky note and just pass it out to everybody so they could just write on there what they like. Or uh, and if you know, it's through um, Zoom. I just have them, you know, um, put it in, in, in the chart and, and we just look through it um, and same thing for all of the processes. And that way they don't have to speak up if they don't want to, but we could still get their ideas across. So that's how I would say I run it. Okay, awesome. Um, and to add to that, I would like to let you know that we have some tools that you can use for retrospectives. Um, so, I do not, that can work, the stickies, uh, and some of these um, tools have stickies in them, but you have to familiarize yourself with some of the tools that people use for, um, for retrospectives, right? We have to get familiar with those tools, some of which is, are uh, fun retrospectives, um, dot com. We have Miro, we have Miro, um, we have, um, does this one is so much fun. Um, I can't really remember it right now. I can't remember, but we have several. If you just Google tools for retrospectives, right? I try to keep my tools anonymous. That way you are not seeing who's contributing. It makes them feel safer enough to come up with um, um, pain points yep. without recourse to you know, action from above. So that way we are focused on the issue and not the person who's sending those um, stickies. Yeah. So who wants to take another shot? Okay, baby, come pee. So who wants to go next? I would really love to hear from people who have not said anything. We, we do have folks in here who are yet to say a word and we are all scrum masters. It would be nice to get contributions from people who have, who have not said anything at all. Do me, there we go, thank you. Oh, did you go back to mute? I, I thought you were going to, do me, do you wanna contribute? Jimmy, you unmuted yourself for a second. You want to take a, a stab at this? Okay, who, want, who else would like to tell us about how they run their retrospective? Hello. Thank you, Bibian. The floor is yours, take it away. So um, I'm sorry, I've been going in and out. I, I'm not sure if this has been mentioned, but um, I know you just talked about the tools, uh, the last statement you made. So um, using Miro, for example, it has templates, which is really awesome. Uh, one thing um, we did recently was first have it not anonymous. Let them have their names to it and um, share all their points and all that. 
And then the next one, you have them uh, be anonymous and say, uh, let's address things that hasn't been mentioned. I think that's another way to really get those who are not talking, who rather um, mention things silently um, to be able to make them participate actively in a way. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Who else wants to go? I, there you go, Mary. There you go. Go ahead. Listen. Yeah, I'm sorry I joined late. No problem. So go I ahead. guess we're talking about how we um, facilitate retro, right? Yes. Let me leave this guy. <laughs> okay. Um, so I use a very total different tool. Um, you know, I'm part of Oral and every other tools, but um, I use a, a tool called Stoneboard. And it could be anonymous, but I just, I don't think we stay anonymous. Everybody's name is a name, but it's just when they are typing. And if I'm not sharing my screen, I don't see who is typing what. So I read out, I encourage them to, so for every column, if we are like 10, I'll be like, I'm expecting a minimum of 10 stickers. So I encourage everybody to at least say something, you know, and I already coach them, you know, this is, this is a place where we can be safe to talk about anything. So uh, some people are just naturally very silent. People that don't just want to talk, it doesn't mean, but the way I try to get them to talk is after every conversation, because it might be like just five people are communicating and we're like 10. So I will go around before we go to the next topic, I will go around with everybody to make sure. So a lot of times I call their names, you know. So I'll be like, okay, so hey, Cynthia, what do you think? What are your thoughts about this? You know, hey, hello, Ali, I'll just call names. And most of the times they would have one thing on, like maybe 30 seconds or one minute, they would have something to say. And that way, you know, they're not feeling like only part of the team are making the decision. And um, I capture the action items. Sometimes I have a column for that right during the retro. Sometimes I just use my notes. But when I have the column for it or use my notes, I try to recapture. After we have, sometimes we, we, we have a lot of conversation. I'm like, sorry guys, what's the action item here? What is the next step for this? You know, and one of them will tell me, Okay, so this is what we are doing. So if I if I don't get it, or if I have something else, I read it out to them to ask them if I capture what we want to do next, right? And they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, 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 that's true. So we just try to like collaborate, you know, and do everything together. And after every retro, I ask them for feedback. Like, how do you feel this has been productive for you? How do you feel? And you know. Sometimes if it's, if it's not a good retro, I've not really run that. I hope they will tell me because I know I have like some of these crazy teams. They'll be like, it was good. Like it was okay. Sometimes it'll be like, I just felt like we're just like talking and talking and it's really nothing, just process. You know, this team, they can really talk. And I'll be like, okay, um, what can we do to get better? You know, and um, another retro, I don't do this often. But maybe after like four retros or so, I come back with a list of the action items from the past. And I ask the team, how do you think we are doing with this stuff that we said we were gonna do, right? Do you think, so because some of the action items, I have my names assigned, you know, and some it's just the team, some it's just one person. So I'm like, my part, did I do what I'm supposed to do as a team? Are we, you know, been doing what we're supposed to do? And I get feedback and then we improve like, like that. I don't know if that's like answered the question. <laughs> that more than answered the question. Thank you for the insight. And someone did ask in the chat if it's ton board, if it's ton with the S T U N, will that be it? No, S -T it's S T O. I think S T O R M B O A R. Storm. Okay, the storm. 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 Okay. The storm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I will be looking into that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for the insight. Who else um, wants to tell us how they run their retrospective? 
Anyone? Do we have any takers? Yes, there you go, Daniel Luce. Take it away. Go ahead, Daniel. I didn't, I didn't even realize I reached my hand. So you see, it was anyway. you were meant to <laughs> I, speak. <laughs> I haven't really spoken because I have my kids everywhere, so I had to run away to the room. That's fine. Um, I would I would use Easy Retro. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, I uh, the the composition aspect uh, will definitely be anonymous. I don't want people to point fingers at people. I want people to freely add their views. Uh, let us know how you feel about uh, the concluded uh, sprint and uh, were we able to achieve our sprint goal? If we weren't able, what were those things we didn't do right? What were the things we did right? And what are those areas we want to improve on? Uh, those are the key areas I want to touch on uh, when I conduct my retrospective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Very brief yet insightful. Who else wants to share with us how they conduct their retros? Scrum Masters, this is the point where you get to unmute your mics and contribute. Thank you. So do we have any takers? Okay. Can I talk? Hi. Oh, hi. Yes. yes. <laughs> hi, hi. Itangi? Okay. Itangi? Yes. 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 Okay, yeah. Please correct me when I, if I'm wrong because I'm I'm not a scrum. I'm just in the process of getting a scrum job. So to start my retrospective, I normally I'll I'll start with an icebreaker, and after the icebreaker, we'll have I'll, I'll have to go through um, my documentation, what I've prepared for for the for the for the retro using Miro. So I'll have to ask my team what um, what worked, what didn't work, and let me let me let me stop you right there. What will your okay. documentation look like? Okay. Actually, I will. It will be like um, this. I don't know. I don't know how to. <laughs> like, I don't say, know. Say I, it however way you want to say. There's no wrong or right answers. Okay. I was, my documentation will look like what are, what are our weaknesses? How was how did it, how did the team how did the spin go through? What are our weaknesses and what are we gonna work on? Okay, like awesome. our action carry item. On. Right, carry on, carry on. Okay, so when I'm done with that, with the action items, we have to use that for to, to for our upcoming sprints to get. Or the to necessary improvement for the for the upcoming sprint. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I can put it. That's that's for me. That's what I. Thank you. I think I can do. It. Thank you, Ethangi. Thank you so much. Who else would like to share with us how they would run their retrospective? Yo, I got my hand up. Thank you. And who who's that? Shaboya Lamine. <laughs> hey, you have the floor. Go ahead. <laughs> you don't change. You don't go cut a quick one. Uh, um, retro, right? This I think this is a good topic for us to talk about. I mean, retro is very important. Like you rightly said, this is where respect and adapt. So before I start, I try to do this psychological safety thing to let them know that hey, uh. You, you guys remember what happened in Vegas, things in Vegas, right? So whatever you do in Vegas, we don't talk about it. So that's the first thing I tell them, hey, whatever you say here, nobody's going to hear. You. And that's why we're trying to make it anonymous when we're using one of them both, maybe mirror, mirror. So whatever you type in, nobody sees it, right? So as soon as I make sure, I let them know that they're safe so they get to speak out. What I'm saying that is that I've seen a lot of evidence. I've done a retro when they speak somebody typed something about the PO not a list around. The PO is a shared resource is another thing, and I understand that. Sometimes it's supposed to be around, but it's not around. Somebody said thing that, hey, we have to have him around. So, honestly, if, if, they, if they're doing it with, with their names up, nobody probably going to say that. So, that helped. That's psychological safety. So, for me, apart from the classic, what went well, what, what didn't go well, what are we going to work on? I like to switch up my retro every time I have the opportunity to do so. So uh, 
One of my favorite is The Good, the Bad, the Ugly. A lot of us can relate to that movie, but it says The Good, the Bad, the Ugly. When we have uh, Clint Eastwood, Tuko, and the other guys. So anytime I put up that retro and I put the picture of the movie, The Good, the Bad, the Ugly, that's like an icebreaker already. A lot of people start talking about the movie. Oh, I've seen this movie. Oh, they start talking about the characters in the movie. So I that way we are having sound. A I actually played the sound. Oh, that's good. So maybe that you see, that's why it's good to share. Next time I'm gonna play the sound. So when we're having a conversation about that movie, we're already talking, people are taking sign. No, I like too cold, is the ugly. I like you know, we're already having a conversation. So while letting out our steam, people are, you know, uh we're conversating, we're we are collaborating, so we're building relationships. So when I get into a retro pop, it already is the process. So which is why visual is also good. With the good, bad, the ugly, I put up the picture, so you have something to talk about already before the retro start. So as soon as they start the retro, of course I have stickies on each of the column. At the end of the day, we just we discuss all the things that we have on the board. We take action items. Uh, you know, volunteers take some, as a scrum master, I take some. So at the end of the day. We're good. So for me, the good, bad, and the ugly is my favorite. I just have to put it out there. Thank you. Thank you, Alameen. Very refreshing. Yes. Um, who else wants to share? Who else? Scrum Masters. This is where you get to unmute your mics because we're sharpening each other's knowledge yep. here. Someone, someone, do we have a volunteer? Let me see. Anyone? I want to add something. Can I? Mary, yeah. Mary, you, you want to share? Yes, no. I just want to add something. Add like, something. Go ahead. Okay, and I think Alame mentioned it. So one of the great um, ways to have a successful retro is to not do the same thing every time. The team gets tired when you do the same thing every time. So um, if you go on Google, when you have a job, when you're working, you would always need to talk to people, talk to Google. It won't always be all that you have learned alone. You will still have to keep learning. So one of the things I do is also to switch up, you know, what we do, what we talk about. Another thing is to understand the team. So you can have a team that understands that can talk like I have a team and we have a manager at the red chair and because the manager is also the PO of the team, you know, so he attends the retro, right? I couldn't tell him not to attend because he's not wearing just one hat. He attends, but the good thing is the team would talk whether he's there or not. Like they will call him out and say, hey, you know, if we can just stop doing this. And they have built that relationship that everybody is safe. You know, we already know that you don't judge. Whatever happens, we all take the fall for it. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's when, and I have another team where the manager doesn't attend and this team, they will also talk. They, if I do something, they will, they will tell me. I mean, they practically called out stuff like, we don't want this to keep happening again. You can work with some teams like that. So one thing is to study your team and some team like fun, some, no matter what you try to do to crack them up, they're just gonna be looking at you and you might feel frustrated. So I try to study the team to actually do what's better. So sometimes I switch it up with those teams. And one of my best is Tori Oscar. And each retro, it depends on what you wanna bring out. So if I feel like the backlog grooming didn't go well, or maybe the, the sprint didn't really do well, I would do this Tori Oscar. I love it because it allows us to, I watch, you know, um, each stories that we worked during the sprint. So I will have all the stories read and I'll be like, okay, the best story, the worst story, and maybe the most annoying story. Or I allow the team to give the, the, the third award. And I've had a lot of things, you know, they say the ugliest story. And then they would bring all the stories and tag it on the base. And they would talk about them, you know, and say, so why did you think this is the best story? Why was this, a, you know, the ugliest? So, yeah, this, this. So that way we gather a lot of information, a lot of, you know, stuff to um, help us improve. So, yeah, that's just what I want to have. Switch up um, your retro. There are yeah. days I do icebreakers. I know as as aspiring scrum masters, we always say we do. There are days I do icebreakers. There are days that I, I don't have time for icebreakers. That's you know, right. once your team just gets to that level where they can talk, um, whether they are anonymous or not, 
would not really matter. But when you have a new team starting to understand Agile, you really, really, you know, will need to do that because that would help them to open up and talk more. That's just what I want to add. Thank you, Mary. Sorry. Thank you. Hey, uh, Cynthia, I couldn't put up my hand. Um, okay, actually. go ahead, Felix. I have a question for um, for Mary. Mary, um, what's the name of the board that you said you use? S-T-O-R-M. S-T-O-R-M, Storm, right? Storm, yes. Then, okay. then, yeah, together. All right, thank you. So I have had to kick my PO out of a retro before because the team wanted didn't want him there. So this is what you do. Um, I kind of catch crews a lot with my teams <laughs> and they're so, so used to it. So this is the thing. They don't want the PO there because they don't feel comfortable enough to talk with the PO there. So what do I do? I go to the PO and I say, hey, um, we're gonna have this retro. And as much as I would personally want you there, I think I would get a lot more out of the teams if you're not there. So can you just excuse me? Like excuse us one or two retros? Because I'm just trying to get something. You go about it so nicely. And of course, nobody wants an additional media, right? So they'll be like, oh, sure, 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 sure. Then you go to your retro. And when you're there, you'll be like, yes, because you guys didn't want him there. I had to kick him out. So you come there and you're like, I kicked him out for you guys. So that way they even trust you more. They feel like, yes, this is a doings kind of scrum master, if you know what I mean. Like this person will always represent our interests. However, you went to the PO to basically beg, right? You see, you see it's, it's a trick. So you give the, the, the dev uh, or the team the impression that it's what they want, they will get. However, this is how you went about it, but that's not the impression you give them. So as long as the PO is not there to get the team talking, or sometimes some of these tools have the lock. You lock the, so I lock my retro sometimes because management sometimes want, want to listen in. But if the meeting is locked, nobody can come in. That way you have them, you know, feeling free enough to want to talk about the issues or the challenges. So who else would want to take a stab at this? Just we keep learning. Question. Just yes, a quick question, ahead. Cynthia. Yeah, you asked me if uh, what would be the topic of my documentation. Can you help me with one, like for the retro? No, that's because that's because you said when you have your retro, then you you go ahead and talk and um and put forward the documentation. So when I heard that, I I was wondering what the documentation would be about, because okay. the retro is actually the team's show. Oh, okay. right. So you're okay. going based off of what they're giving you. So I just wanted to make sure that you, you didn't have this idea of you coming in with an agenda. OK, okay. Yeah. thank you. That will yeah. be for them. They will set the tone. So when they set the tone, you go off of whatever it is they're telling you that mm -hmm. they are um, they have as pain points. OK, you understand? Right. Yes. yes. So just make sure. I. I like to give them the impression that they are the bosses. And um, don't forget, we are servant leaders. Let's yes. not forget that. Yes. So if someone asks me what I do, I keep telling the team, I'm here to serve you. I keep saying that I'm here to serve you. It's good for their ego because yeah. they're not seeing you as a project manager who's telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. I keep telling them, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you. That makes them, you know, yeah. fluid enough to want to trust you, want to open up to you, want to come to you with issues because they see that you are there to solve. But so then okay. if you're telling them, I'm here to serve you, make sure that you're true to your word. For instance, if you have retro items, you have to make sure that during the next sprint, you follow it through. If let's say people are having sandbox issues, recurrent sandbox issues, make sure that you're following up with DevOps. Okay. Because if you keep having the same items, retro by, by, by retro, by retro, by retro, they'll just feel like you're wasting your time. Okay, so, exactly. Thank you. That, who would like yeah. to take another stab at this? Scrum Masters, I would love to hear. Rashida, I'm putting you on the spot. Please unmute your mic and tell us how you run your retros. Rashida is someone I have actually learned a lot from. Rashida, thank you. Hi, everyone. So I think pretty much everybody already said, you know, the way I run my retro and I actually I've learned a lot today. So um, the only thing I do differently that I've not heard is 
I always tell my Rachel off with her music. I don't think anybody said that, but just to kind of like, you know, set the stage and, but apart from, you know, I think what everybody said. So I don't, it's just going to be like a reputation, but okay. there's nothing that I'm doing differently. Other than playing music. Awesome. Yes, okay. to, start, to start the meeting. And of course, I think somebody also mentioned something about um, getting people to talk during retro. So um, another thing I always do is like at least a week, like the Monday before the retro. So we do our retro the last day of the sprint. So that Monday after stand up, I just kind of like retreat, oh guys, you know, our retro is coming up on Wednesday, make sure um, you go ahead because um, we use a sticker note. I try mirror with my team, but for some reason it's not working. So I'm like, you know what? I'm done with it. So just that reminder, like, okay, maybe something happened. So that way they can put their thoughts down before the actual um, ritual day. So that also helps. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. So I do that too. So sometimes um, in the in the group chat, in the in the squad chat, you just go in there, you copy your link from your retro invite and you give it to them and you say, hey guys, just a quick one. Here is the link to the retro uh, board. Please feel free in your spare time to document any challenges you may be currently going through. That way it's like you giving them an open check because some people after the blocker is resolved or after the challenge is resolved, they just move on from there. And so they start struggling during the retro to remember especially if they have other things in their mind. But if you share the link to the retro randomly, they can go in there and populate the board. So I have had to do this on numerous occasions where when we come in for the retro, the board is already populated. We just go down to the business of the day. That way you don't find yourself singing, oh, please bring your stickies in, contribute and all of that. Because after a while, you start feeling like you're a circle, you're a clown in a circus. Right, right. And I think that's all I mean. So, so to answer your question regarding the music, so that's another fun thing I do with the team. Like, okay, most of my team, uh, at least 95% of them are based in Indian. So like Monday, okay, what music would be for our next retro? So it's kind of like an action item. We'll pick, okay, what music we're going to play. But my go-to is always, you know, One Love, that Bob Bradley song. So I'm like, everybody likes that song, right? So, but typically the team tells me, okay, well, this retro, this is a song we would like, you know, for you to play. So I cannot have that, like, you know, an action item. Thank Does you that so answer your question, Ali I mean? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Rashida. You see, all of this she was keeping, I had to put her on the spot. And I put her on the spot because she's my friend. So maybe it's looking like I may have to put a couple people on the spot. Because now <laughs> I know that I have to, I can use music. Um, I have used the good, the bad and the ugly because I was using that theme. Um, so I can actually save myself all the jokes and just play music. You know what I mean? So if we do not share, we will not know. So here is where I will toss the ball again in your court and say, who's going to take on the next, um, um, who's gonna share next? Anyone, do we have any takers before I begin to put us on the spot? Because now we've seen how productive that is. Anyone, we have people who have yet to say anything. Can we? Can we also use like drawings, like design, like control an animal? Like who, 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 can, who can like, somebody who knows like the best drawer, somebody who knows how to draw, like can you draw a good, like who can draw it best, just kind of to distract the team, like to call the attention for the team for everybody to collaborate. So I if, think bringing in design like drawings. If your team it, is down with it, that's why uh -huh. I said to you, go by what you're feeling. You have to sense what they're feeling. At. You can't just come to them and start showing them pictures of goats and everything. If I come in a meeting and you're showing me pictures of goats, I'll be like, <laughs> I'll give you this. You know, okay. so it's yeah. based off of the energy in the room. You have to be very responsive to the energy in the room, right? Mm -hmm. They set the tone and then you go by whatever energy you're getting off of them. You can make suggestion and see what they what they are willing to go go with. 
So what about going by music? People have different choices. So you might play music, somebody doesn't like it as well. So you can pick top three and have them vote. Okay. Yeah. There are different and, ways. There are different ways to bail a cat. Yeah. Okay. And to, to add to that, sometimes I just ask them, um, like someone should, you know, play music because it's hard. Um, you know, I work mostly with whites and sometimes you don't know their choice, you know. So like what song would we like to play? But I also have this jazz music that I play. No words, nothing. It's just jazz songs. And they'll be like, oh, that's cool. We love it. So sometimes I just ask them. And about the drawing, I remembered because the stoneboard, I never used it before. And I didn't want to introduce a new one to the company. I don't think they were ready. I was like, let's, let's just explore it. So there's a whiteboard for drawing. I tell my team, I am bad at drawing. You know, is anyone good? Like, can anyone do something fun with this? So sometimes when we go, when we get to retro, they are gonna start drawing stuff, drawing funny things. And from there we said it and I say, hey, what's that? What did you just draw? We we'll laugh about it. Yeah. I don't know how to draw. I didn't ask them to, but if you just, I mean, if you guys are cool, you're close, you know, when they trust you and everything, they're gonna like play around with a lot of things. But everything Cynthia said, seriously, it boils down to, your team's responsiveness. You must be able to know what they want. It's okay to have all this knowledge is great, but applying it, you have to sense the kind of team you're working with and Absolutely. know what works for them best. Otherwise, they'll just be looking at you and you start feeling like, you know, you. like a clown. You know what I mean? So you have to sense the room. Sometimes I come in with scenario, scenario-based questions. So um, one, one, I, I really know my, all three teams enjoyed was, I said, now guys, walk with me here. I know how to bring energy to my meetings, right? Um, so I say to them, today, everybody is going to answer this question. Now you have your mother and your spouse. You use spouse, you don't say your wife because you have female too, you have to be sensitive. So you say you have your mother and your spouse on a boat. You're in the middle of the ocean. And for that, boat to make it to shore, somebody has to sink and another person, who will you save? It's a tough one. You'd be like, hmm. Then you begin to see people because now they are really thinking about it. Something they never ever anticipated, something they never, not, never crossed their mind. If they have to save their spouse or their mother, we know how dear our mothers are. But then there's your spouse we're talking about. So they'd be like, hmm. it, it rouses something out of them right? And then you see them, some start analyzing. And then some people started telling us how, oh, my wife this, and my wife that. You begin to hear things. You have to make it fun and interesting. And then it will amaze you, the kind of response. And it will also set the tone for them to participate next time. So that way you can never go wrong with, you're in the middle of the ocean, and then you have your mother and your spouse, and then somebody has to sink while the other person, so the boat can make it to shore. Who will you choose it's a tough one but ah. some say oh i would think my wife or oh, my mother is dear to me you hear all kinds of things i have had someone say i would i would i would uh, jump in the ocean and save them both it will amaze you these are scenarios that will get people to talk so having said that i'm bringing the ball back in your court who's gonna go next tina i see tina has unmuted her mic Go ahead, Tina, you have the floor. Go ahead, Tina, you're keeping us waiting. All 31 of us, you're keeping us waiting. Go ahead, Tina. We would love to hear from you. Muting yourself back is not going to work. You're on the spot now, Tina, share. Pray, share, share, share. Tina R, do you want to share with us? How will you run your retrospective? Okay, will someone else volunteer? I would love to hear from people who, ha who have not said anything or who are yet to say something. We have 20 more minutes. We can snap this up and then, you know, um, so we can go around the room. It will be really nice for us to go around the room. So at the end of the day, we can take something like this. Elsie, there you go. My girl, 
Go ahead, Elsie, share with us. Hi, everyone. Hi. So I really feel guilty for having not said anything, but everybody has just said any, everything. So, <laughs> and especially with uh, my case, it, there's so many restrictions to what I can do. My company mm -hmm. has their own inbuilt retro bot. Mm -hmm. So there is just nothing fun on, on it. There's nothing I can do. All I have on it is uh, what went well, what didn't go well, and action item. Actually, I can switch up and change the wordings, but that's just it. There's nothing fun I can do on it. So what I have basically been doing is just bringing Redo. That's what I've just been doing with the team. I can't bring in any game. I tried um, getting to the website to bring in a game, but they will flag you. You can't get to this website. So there's just nothing I can do. You see, this is why it's good to share. You see why we encourage people to share? We have someone like Elsie who has all these different constraints for her retro. And so she feels that this is the reason why she can, she can really not do so much because they, the company already has a retro uh, board embedded in maybe your Confluence page, maybe your SharePoint. I don't know where you share your documentation. So this it's is an application that is inbuilt. They build their own retro board. Right. So you see, this is why it's good to share. Elsie, in my organization, we use the Confluence page, right? And so every team have their Confluence page where you go and document your retro. Now that can be used as documentation purpose. However, it's up to you as the Scrum Master to make it fun. So this is what I do. We have a standard Confluence page where we document retros. However, I use these tools like fun retrospective during the retro. Now, after the retro, I will collect these items and transfer it to the Confluence page. Problem solved. This is why we try to drive engagement here because there's, there's people who go through things. So if Elsie did not share, she would not probably get this. This is another way to go about it, Elsie, in a nutshell. You can use the same boards that we talk about. The Try Easy Retro, try Fun Retrospective, try Miro, try Miro, right? Or come in with jokes and just use stickies. You can use chats, have them chat in, right? Or you can make it fun. But for the purpose of documentation, you transfer the outcome of your retro to that board because that is what management will use when they want to see what your retro items is. So you cannot go and open the Confluence page and start running your retro off of Confluence. They'll just be like, mm. that's why they may not even want to participate because that page exactly. is boring. My, it's my boring. team members are very reluctant with retrospective. Because it's boring. So you have to jazz it up some. You have to switch it up some. You have to drive engagement. And then you transfer to the board. Does that help in any way? No. Yeah. Can I add yeah. something? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing. And however, when I transfer, uh, you know, the thought from the mirror board or the fun retrospective into confluence, I still restrict the permission and I let the team know that. Even though it's on Confluence, it's only exclusive to the team. Um, nobody else out of the team is able to view the pages that we put on Confluence. That way, they still have that psychological safety that, okay, what about the scheduling retro? It's not being, you know, it's not being um, made uh, public. But they do understand that the action items um, is something that would have to, you know, take to whoever we need to follow up to be able to, you know, get things going. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Yes. And, and to respond to that, if you have, let's say, squads and fleets, um, you cannot restrict management from coming to that page because sometimes they want to use these, um, what, what you have on your items. You cannot, um, I don't know about you restricting access, but I do know that certain people have access while other people don't. Um, I can access the retro board in any team in my organization. It just depends on what's unique to your organization. However, if a scrum master, like where I currently work, we have something called Poclack, where as a scrum master, I will first um, um, 
deal with my retro items, with my direct reports, and then my agile coach before we take it to the management. So if you have that, how are you going to lock people out? What's important and what you can do, however, is to make sure that what is reflecting on your board is the collective action item, collective pain point, collective solution. That way, they know that for this quarter, for this team, this is what we have done as a team. So you are still helping with psychological safety because you're not putting anybody's name there to say this person said. This is what the team said, and that's good enough. I have in the past had a senior engineering manager say, I want to know who exactly said this. And I said, I would be betraying my team. Sorry to name names. How about can we focus on the issue here and not who said this? This is how the squad or the team is feeling right now. So let's just forget about who said what. And he said, you have to tell me. And I said, no, sir, I don't have to. So this is where your job as shielding the team also comes in, besides shielding them from distraction. You have to shield. And I would tell my, my squad, I will fall on the sword for you guys if I have to. And they know I will. They know I'm good for it. I'm good for my work. So they, they trust that. But if you're the kind of scrum master who goes to say, oh, this person said, then you throw people under the bus, you lose that team in no, in no time. So thank you for sharing, Elsie. Thank who you very would, much, Elsie. You're welcome. Who else would want to share with us? Cynthia, there's a question for you in the chat. Okay, let me see. For Cynthia, what cards are those? Oh, it is called best self ice breaker you can find it on amazon and it's cheap i think it's about 25 dollars or 30 dollars i can't remember how much i bought it it was somebody who shared it in the group chat it was caroline she shared it you can find it on amazon it contains 150 cards so you can never go wrong it's a good investment you will use it over and over and over and over and over it's fun Another thing you can use is the cyclometer. The cyclometer, you share the link and then y'all play, you spin the wheel. It's like, so you, they have this um, feeling that they are in Vegas. You know how when you go to Vegas, you throw your coin and then you spin the wheel. So it's called spin the wheel. So you control it. And then somebody owns the question, you spin the wheel. And then wherever the arrow points, whatever question the arrow points at, they, the person who owned the question gets the answer. It's fun. And then after a while, what I did, yes, go ahead. Cyclometer? Cyclometer, yes. Um, Cynthia, I think, could you put it in the chat? Could you okay, put it in the I chat? can do that. There we go. And then, and then what I did was after a while, I started switching out the questions in cyclometer because you don't want to repeat the same question week in, week out. So I started putting in team-based questions. For instance, I would say, um, which person within the team is very fond of his dog? We all know it's Kirkland. We all know, you know, things like, you just jazz it up. We have a bathroom singer <laughs> amongst us. Everybody knows that's Brian. You know what I mean? So when you, when you come fresh all the time, the team has something to look forward to. So now I'm passing the ball back in your court and say, we have 10 more minutes before the end of this session. And I would like to hear from people who have not said anything. Just to let us know that you took something out because otherwise you would have wasted two hours of your precious time being on this great forum where we can learn and not contribute anything. So who's gonna take it up? Um, uh, Cynthia, what's the name of the box you uh, you put up the other time? It's called Icebreaker Starter Park. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Do you Thank see you. it? You uh -huh. see yes. It? yes. Yes. Thank you. It's on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, all right. And it's, and it's very, very cheap. It's something I know you can invest in your team because it will save you a whole lot of headache. If I don't feel like thinking about something to ask them, I just whip the card out and say, hey, guys, let's do it. Who wants to go first? Saves you a whole lot of mental 
thinking because I'm not in the mood every day. Trust me on that one. So we have nine more minutes. Let's utilize the nine minutes the best way we can. Yes, baby. What was it? Just give me nine minutes, okay? I'll take you, I'll buy you the icy grape digger. So who wants to go? We have nine more minutes. Anyone? How about we do this? Oh, Chantel, go ahead, Chantel. Mm. We would love to hear from you, Chantel. Go ahead. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, no, no, <laughs> that was an accidental one. No, no, I am enjoying these retros because that's what I try to do is I, I try to make sure that I let them know that everything we say is, well, here's what I do for my retros is I do try to do a different format every time because I'm always trying to dig into a different question or a different <laughs> scenario or just try to get them to open up a little bit more each time. And then I always include a kudos column for it so they can give each other kudos. Right. And, and then that's the only thing I ask them if I, if they're okay, if I share with, you know, the art or the, the management the leadership, like, are you guys okay if I share the kudos column, but everything else is just between us. And I have had management before growl at me, like, we want to know what's going on. <laughs> you know what, me and my team, you know, unless there's something that I feel like I need help with as a scrum master, mm -mm, no, this is between us. And that's how I gain the security of the team and the psychological safety. Awesome. Awesome, Chantel. We run the same style. I would tell management, you hired me to do this. Trust me to do it. As yeah. long as we are creating working software and we have, you know, frequent releases or we release par, you know, when it's time, that's, that's all you should be focused on. But trying to come to find out what the team is doing, how they're doing it, uh-uh, it's not good for the team. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Chantel. That's yeah. really refreshing. So and who I do else? Tell them too, is the, the other thing I tell them is we fail as a team or we succeed as a team. That's so my style I, too. Yeah, I don't need them to tell them. I don't need them to tell their management, hey, I failed at this. I just need them to come to me. Tell right. me what you did and tell me how I can reword the story right. as a team. Right. That's it. Right. And they get to trust you more too yes. because mm -hmm. they know you have their back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing, Chantel. Chantel, I really appreciate that contribution. See, there's a lot coming from people who are muted. So having said that, who will want to unmute and take a stab at this? Don't worry, we have just six more minutes and we'll be out of your hair. But please let's utilize the last six minutes that we have. So Cynthia, I have a question. <laughs> So what about if you you have a manager who really want to assist to those retro, how do you handle that kind of a manager? Can you ask it again? Uh, how do you handle a manager who really want to participate in retros? Does anyone want to pick that question? Um. Yes, um, can, I, can, I, can I go? Sure. Okay, so uh, it, it, it depends. So some um, manage some people. We, we we have to understand that not everybody wants to attend a a, a ceremony just to come uh, uh, be uh, spying or uh, controlling the team. We need to understand that so, some also come for uh, educational purpose. So you if um, a manager wants to attend a retro, you, you can allow them. You can allow them, right? So, but when, before the beginning of the uh, meeting, you, you, you state it again, you reinstate it again that, uh, to let your team know that this is a safe space. And um, because um, you, might be, you, uh, you might be seeing, you might be seeing a new, um, you might see a new face uh, among us right now, but don't let uh, that uh, make you feel like you, you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't let that make you feel like you can't share whatever you want to share. So it's here for um, educational purpose, it's here to learn yeah. and to see how we run uh, teams. So yeah. that also we uh, give your team some uh, psychological safety that, okay, mm -hmm. we can uh, share our uh, views even though uh, a new face is here. So that it's, 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 them... it's, only, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a bad idea if a manager so. wants to attend a retro. Because mm -hmm. some of them actually come for genuine feedback. It's only when the person is, 
a vindictive person or has a track record for being vindictive that you may want to protect your team. And there are people who say they don't like their POs to sit in. Do not forget that the PO is also part of the team. So it's only when you feel that the presence of the PO threatens the team or the meeting that you, you know, you take actions to that effect. So it's not always a bad thing to have management or an external person sitting. Can I add something? Yes, absolutely, Felix. All right. It's very important you coach your team to understand that the PO is part of the Scrum team. Yeah. Um, teams, especially developers, um, due to prior experience and you know whatever they've been through, have in their back of their mind that the product owner is not part of their team. The product owner is not part of them. So it's as Scrum Masters, we should always strive to um, work with our team to let them, you know, take that mindset out of their mind. And also, as you're doing that, you also be coaching your product owner to let him know that right. you are part of this team. So whatever you do impacts the whole team and you as well. So that way, they wouldn't feel like it's me against the developers. No, That's it's right. we are in this together. That's so right. that way, anything, the team will understand that whatever we do affects the Scrum Master, the product, everybody. So usually, when um, one thing I coach my team whenever I go for daily stand-up is I let them know that during daily stand-ups, you're not here to report to me. You're not here to report to the product owner. Very your important. Report, your report, you're, you're not even reporting. We are here to plan for this day as That's a right. team. It's right. it's a it's a mini planning session for us to know how we're going to run our day. That way, they, they don't. it takes them out of we are reporting, reporting. No, we are here to plan. So Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Felix. We only have two minutes to the end. So let's just turn the last two minutes into a retro for this session. How do you think this particular um, session went? I would like for us to unmute our mics, especially people who did not contribute. We would like to hear from you. How do you think this particular um, um, meeting went? So let's 